Hi everyone, in this video what we're going to do is we're going to prove that the limit is x approaches 3 of x squared plus 2x minus 15 divided by x minus 3 is equal to 8 using the epsilon delta definition which we have written right here. So the definition says that for all epsilon greater than 0 there exists delta greater than 0 such that for all x 0 less than the absolute value of x minus c less than delta implies the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. Okay so in this problem c is equal to 3 f of x is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 15 divided by x minus 3 and l is equal to 8. We begin by letting epsilon be greater than 0. We choose delta to be equal to some value which we shall specify later. Then for all x we have 0 less than the absolute value of x minus 3 less than delta implies that the absolute value of x squared plus 2x minus 15 divided by x minus 3 minus 8 which we can rewrite as x squared plus 2x minus 15 minus 8x plus 24 divided by x minus 3 which is equal to x squared minus 6x plus 9 divided by x minus 3. Now notice that we can rewrite the numerator as x minus 3 multiplied by x minus 3 or x minus 3 squared. Doing so we have x minus 3 squared divided by x minus 3 and we can cancel a factor of x minus 3 so we're just left with x minus 3. Now remember right here we wrote that we need the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. So what value should we choose for our delta based upon what we have here and what we have here? A sensible choice would be to choose delta equal to epsilon. Then this condition here implies that the absolute value of f of x minus l, which simplifies to the absolute value of x minus 3, is less than epsilon. And that completes the proof. Notice that we were really lucky in this example, that the um, expression f of x minus l simplified to what we have right here and that made choosing epsilon very simple. In most examples this won't be the case. We'll end up with different expressions in the numerator that don't cancel with what we have in the denominator and what we have to do is use this inequality right here to come up with different upper bounds. But that's this example finished. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this content useful. If you did please make sure to like and subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I hope you have a great day.